Welcome back to an instant reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. We had another day, another commitment for the football program, this time from uh, six foot six defensive end out of Columbus, Ohio, Elijah King. He was on an official visit uh, the weekend of uh, June 2nd. He was that, that first big visitor weekend. He took a subsequent visit to Purdue this past weekend, and he had visits scheduled for Indiana this weekend and Iowa the following weekend, which he will no longer be taking because he is committed to the Scarlet Knights. So, Richie, tell us a little bit about this kid and how this commitment came together. Yeah, so uh, you just hit it. You said it before. He was on campus June 2nd. Um, everything we were hearing was he was going to stay out in the Midwest. Uh, that kind of leans with the official visit schedule as well, where you just said, I think, checked out Indiana. He was going to check out Purdue, or he did check out Purdue, and then he was going to check out Iowa as well. Uh, but Marquise Watson does it again. Um, he pulled a, pulled a rabbit out of his hat a little bit and was able to get this kid to, uh, to commit the Rutgers now. How good is he? He's clearly a power five kid in my eyes, at least on film. Um, he's a tenacious pass rusher, first off, and he's got great size at 6'6", 230. Um, I don't really know the school he plays for, Gahana uh, football um, or high school football, but end of the day, this is a kid that a lot of power fives want, especially in the Midwest. So you you just beat out a bunch of big 10 schools, and this is this is a big get for Rutgers. Um I know it's a 5.5 three-star, which I, I'm still trying to figure out why. I think it should be a little bit higher at least. Um, like every other guy, he needs to pack on a couple pounds. He's, he's 6'6", 230, so he's almost there, but he's he's uh, he's right there when it comes to uh, incoming freshmen. So I think this is a huge get for Rutgers, huge get for Marquise Watson, who continues to dominate on the recruiting trail. And I said it before the pod, I'm going to say it again. Marquise Watson is basically the Fran Brown of this recruiting class but more loyalty. He got almost got poached by Ole Miss, but Rutgers said, nope, you're not going anywhere. He wanted to stay uh, on, on the banks regardless. He did. He got a little pay bump, and now he's showing uh, showing his uh, recruiting strengths on the on the trail right now. Yeah, he's definitely killing it. Um, he, this is the, the fourth <clears throat> defensive line commitment of the class, the third D-end commitment of the class after the Lumen brothers and now him. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you see Rutgers uh, – in terms of defensive line recruiting, are they are they done there? Are they going to look to add one or two more guys? I, I don't think they're done. Um, they still got Mason Carter, who's uh, – I guess he has one more visit, I believe, and then he's going to decide. Caden Brown's still on, on the back burner a little bit. Dee Holmes down at Gonzaga High School in D.C. is a four-star to keep an eye on, and they're in a battle between uh, Rutgers and South Carolina, it sounds like, with, with Carolina probably in the lead there, but – Gonzaga High School coach Randy Trivers uh, was on Chiano's staff back in 2009, so that's something to monitor there. Um, trying to think who else. I think that's Makai Byerson down in Virginia is another name to keep an eye on. That They'll have to make a decision there, but Namdia Bako down in North Carolina. So basically there's still a ton of out-of-state guys still available, and they're not done yet, but they have to be a little bit more selective now with uh, one, two, three three guys on uh on board right now or is it four I forget, four yeah with Bethia so four yeah yep four yeah so they got to be a little bit more selective and uh we'll see where that goes but so far so good for for this uh recruiting class and huge shout out I, I gotta say it again Marquise Watson is killing it on the recruiting trail for Rutgers and he's a big reason why this class is higher ranked than last year's class yeah I, I totally agree uh he's clearly <clears throat> showing he's he's worth every penny and he's also kind of He's taken his, his game a step forward because he's this is his first full time assistant coaching gig, and mm -hmm. he was always talked about pretty highly from all the New Jersey kids who ended up down at you know Old Miss like you talk um, you know the the young Davison Ignosen I think a big reason he ended up going there was the combo of Partridge and uh, and Watson so he's 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 been known as a recruiter but now he's actually showing he could prop himself up on his own and uh, really earn his his keep. Uh, just tell us a little bit about Elijah King's game, though. He's obviously a huge, huge, and he's six foot six, two thirty is what his profile lists him at. And just watching his tape, he's just—he's constantly just like making a ton of penetration in the backfield. It looks like he's got a pretty deep bag of 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 moves too. He's not just like you know, he's he's not like the type of edge rusher who's only got you know a bull rush or only got a speed move. He looks like he. 
He's got a few spin moves in his bag. Tell us a little bit about how he plays on the field. Yeah, so, I mean, you could talk about that spin move first off. You don't see many 6'6 six, six guys doing you don't, pulling off. You don't see many off. high school kids with a spin move. <laughs> yeah, period. that's true. That's true, too. But uh, everyone tries it in the camps, and they don't, don't really succeed. This kid's doing it on an actual game day, and it's successful. Yeah. Um, mind you, he's six six. Like that's a it's a big body to spin and all go and get around that lineman. It's not easy. Um, also, great hand placement. It seems like he's he's really good at uh, batting down the offensive lineman's. Uh, sorry, my dog's going nuts in the background. Yeah, um, <laughs> really good at uh, batting down the offensive lineman's hands and doing the little uh, shark swim move where you go a little bit lower than them. Um, he's he bends actually pretty well. I I'm still trying to figure out why he's a five point five three star because he's got a quick off the ball snap or. Quick jump off the snap. Jeez. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, he's got a quick off, off the ball snap. Um, he's powerful. He uses his arms to tackle a little more, and I'd, rather, I'd prefer to see him use his body a little bit more because he does have that size, but he's 6'6", he's six, six, so he does have that length at, at, his, uh, at his advantage. So overall, he's just powerful, good tackler. I, I still don't get it. Like, I think he should be a little bit higher. And th- there's a reason why, like, all these Midwest Big Ten schools offered him. There's a reason why Ohio State was showing interest in him back in May, a month ago. Yeah, um, they wanted to get him to camp. I don't know if he ended up getting to that Ohio State camp or not. Regardless, um, this is a this is a really good get for Rutgers. And anytime a guy like Larry Johnson, the D line coach for Ohio State, has interest in someone, that tells me at the very least they have significant potential, um, because he's probably the best D line coach in college football currently, and maybe one of the best D line coaches ever. So. I mean, if that guy wants him, I, I think if you're uh, if you're Rutgers, you got to be really happy with this one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of uh, said everything we can about this kid. Big addition to the class. Um, where else are you hearing that there might be some some movement in the class? It sounds like there might be another player that's uh, on tap. Yeah, so um, right now, uh, this was interesting. This came out of nowhere yesterday. So Sage Claudius is a Morgantown, West Virginia native, but he's playing up at prep school at St. Thomas More, Connecticut. Basically, what every kid does at this point, if they're going to prep, they're going to Connecticut, it seems like. Yeah. Um, similar move to what, I don't know if you guys remember Zion Tracy in the previous class who Rutgers was pursuing. Something what he did is uh, basically didn't get all, not many offers his senior year, went to prep, all of a sudden shows out and it's like, Oh, there we go. Holy shit. Logan Howland did it last class. Um, happens every year, but this kid went to St. Thomas more, picked up a couple IVs. He's a smart kid. I I've actually monitored him for a little bit now because he, uh, he did get a Penn state offer back in January, February, whatever it was. Um, so I've been talking to him a little bit back and forth, talking to the family, just trying to understand why he doesn't have more offers because he, he looks like a pretty solid prospect. He was at our rivals camp this past May. Um, and he, and he looked really, he looked pretty good. I, he didn't st- like stand out as the best receiver. That was Corey Duff, obviously, but he, uh, he did look pretty good. Now he tweeted out an offer yesterday and it took it down real quick. And then I was like, all right, what I got to reach out about this one. Like what's, what's going on guys? Like what's the scoop here? And he's like, all right, he's, he's going to Rutgers this weekend. I was like, I thought he was supposed to go to Iowa this weekend. And they're like, no, 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 he canceled that. He's going to Rutgers. So Interesting. big news, big news for the Scarlet Knights to get, uh, potentially get him on board. And uh, just good news to get uh, to beat out Iowa again. You're, this, these are the teams you want to beat out. Mind you, Iowa doesn't have the, the best offense in the world. Um, just last year, but they in the past they've they've proven to recruit some pretty solid three star recruits and turn them into uh, solidified playmakers. Now, I think this one's going to end up with uh, the Scarlet Knights, whether it be Saturday, Sunday, maybe even Monday. Might wait a little bit, but uh, I do like Rutgers' chances right now. He's coming. To, he, uh, Rutgers wants him as an athlete, not a wide receiver, which he's listed at currently. Uh, we'll probably get that fixed. Now, in terms of where he could be slotted as an athlete, he could play defense technically. He could he could play wide receiver, who I just mentioned, or he could even play tight end because uh, he doesn't have the most speed, the best speed in the world. And that's where I kind of see him as like a hybrid type wide receiver, tight end guy. I know they're done at tight ends technically, but like, if they get Corey Duff, I feel like he's a tight end at the next level. Um, but you start him at wide receiver, see what happens, then go down the line and maybe put him to tight end. This kid could be in a similar scenario. Or he ends up being a, a pretty uh, tall, lengthy cornerback, which uh, – not even cornerback, uh, safety, I guess, right? I think he's like 6'3", mm-hmm. I believe. Um, yeah, so 6'3", or 6'4", he's a pretty tall kid. So, I mean, 
we'll wait and see what happens. Uh, but yeah, overall, um, I, I think they have a good shot at this one, especially getting them on campus this weekend. As of right now, he's the only official visitor this weekend. We'll wait and see if that changes because it seems like it does every single time. Uh, we had two official visitors this week, and then all of a sudden the third one comes in and Samarian Robinson, and within, I don't know, 24 hours, he flips. So yeah, yeah. we'll uh, we'll see what happens there. But that 6'4", 184 on his profile is uh, legit from this past May. That's what we measured him in that camp. So uh, Connecticut kid too. So uh, Not Connecticut technically, but um, the prep schools keep producing, whether it be for football or basketball up in Connecticut in the New England area. And I know he's number nine in Connecticut, but he's uh, if you were to slot him in New Jersey, I think he's around like 15, 14, something like that. So a pretty good kid if you can get him uh, locked in and on board. Yeah, definitely. So that's one to, to keep on the lookout for uh, for this weekend because it sounds like there might be some uh, good news coming there. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on is that the rivals – uh, class of 2025 basketball rankings are about to come out. Yes. And we, and, uh, we do have some interesting, uh, ranking updates for Rutgers targets. And I'll just start from oh, I just the top. Said that. I forgot to write that one up, but it will come out next week. Just so everyone knows. It'll come out next week. But some of the guys that have previously been mentioned for Rutgers, um, Malik Thomas, the kid out of Pittsburgh, is now ranked sixth overall in the class. He's a five star. Yeah, Rutgers is showing interest in seven. I think it was. Mm -hmm. So, Trey McKinney, who is a Georgia or sorry, a Michigan kid who is uh, tight with Marlon Williamson, he's now ranked thirteenth. Mm -hmm. He's an, also a five star. Darius Acuff, another Michigan kid who is close with Marlon Williamson, is ranked fifteenth overall. Uh, Darius Adams, previously of Manasquan High School. Next high school, TBD, is now ranked 21st, so he's right outside that five-star line. Uh, Nico Bundelo, who I believe is Serbian, uh, who Rutgers started to recruit. Yes. I think he's going to school in Ohio. Um, <clears throat> he's ranked 34th overall. Brandon Stores, the New York City guard that we had previously mentioned, I think. Uh, somebody on staff was like coached his father at some point, right? Uh, uh, yes, Brandon Stores was his – Steve Hayne coached his father. Steve, yes. Yeah, so Steve Hayne coached his yeah. father. He's ranked 46th now. <clears throat> so a lot of guys uh, Rutgers is is involved with getting big jumps in the class. We're involved with a lot of uh, top kids. Do you see any on this list that really stand out to you as uh, guys Rutgers is doing really well with right now, or is it still uh, too early? It's kind of early still, but uh, Malik Thomas, I feel like, is a little bit of a stretch. Uh, he he's a Pittsburgh kid, and he I, from what I was told, he basically got offers to go to like just about any high school he wants to, um, and and. Basically, at number six, you're going to get offers to any college you want to go to. But he was yeah. really content with staying home and staying close to Pittsburgh and playing for uh, Lincoln Park High School. Um, so I, I wouldn't be shocked if he stayed a little bit more local. Maybe Pittsburgh pulls that one off. I'm not sure yet. Um, Darius Adams is the one to keep a close eye on. And then Darius Acuff. Darius Acuff Jr., who goes from not ranked to 15, is absolutely insane. He's a Detroit kid, Cass Tech High School. Um, now Marlon Williamson's big ties are to the area of Detroit and Mi Michigan specifically. He also plays for the family AAU program, which was partially, I don't know if it was started by Marlon Williamson or if he just coached there, um, whatever, but he has some really deep ties to that program. Rutgers just got in on him the other day. We posted an article on him this morning. That would be a phenomenal get for Rutgers. Um, especially because they got in on him before he was even ranked technically, even though, semantics i guess at that point because he just got his ranking or he will get his ranking monday rockers offered like two days ago um trey mckinney i think he also plays for the family aau program which is basically like the big big one out there in michigan which is huge and a big reason why Rutgers went after marlon williamson other than the the brain and knight ties and the uh omar cooper ties and ace bailey yada 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 but um i'd say right now i'm pretty confident in i shouldn't say confident um I like their chances with the cuff. I like their chances with Darius Adams, but once he moves to that new school, at either La Lamere or Sunrise Academy is the rumor. I think it's going to be really tough. They got him pretty early with Nico Bandalo. He's like you said before, he's in Ohio and he's been mentioned to the staff by Caleb McConnell's old coach in Ohio and, and Dave Brisky. So that's kind of how they found him a little bit. And I'm told TJ is all over this kid. So we'll wait and see what happens there. And TJ doesn't lose very often, it seems like. TJ, TJ has been winning a lot of recruiting battles. And it's funny because, like, 
when he first came on, I, I questioned it. I'm not going to lie. I questioned the hire. It's an AAU coach going from like AAU to director of player development to assistant coach within the 365 day span, like absolutely bonkers. But, uh, especially just because that was fresh off of Steve Haynes. Um, not, I guess demotion technically. Um, so it was, it kind of left a sour taste in my mouth to say like, Hey, like you're going to do this again. Like, what are we doing? And then all of a sudden TJ is one of the better recruiters in the country or in the Northeast at yeah, least. Yeah. So that's, that's huge. I think TJ had a good shot there with Nico Bandalo. Uh, I'm looking at the rest of the name, man, I'm getting old. Cause I see Jermaine O'Neal Jr. And I'm like, Holy hell. That was a guy I watched playing up or growing up. I see Boozer's son on here. Um, I'm like, geez, this is. You see this Bryce is, James on there too. Bryce James. I'm like, this is rough. Like, what are we doing? I'm like, I stop growing. I just got to stop growing up. This is not fun. <laughs> this isn't fun anymore. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't think anyone specifically just yet. It's still pretty early for 2025. Um. Although some some kids like wouldn't shock me if they're going to commit soon because like Cooper Flag, who's number one, is rumored to commit soon, but he's also rumored to reclass as well. So yep, yep, we'll see we'll see what happens. But there's a uh, there's one kid I, I I wish Rutgers would uh, offer. I don't think they've offered yet. And Danny Cabruccia, he's a uh, Archbishop Stepanak, and it's it's funny that he's on uh, that high now um, because I was watching last year at the uh, what was it Slam Dunk at the Beach tournament down in Lewis, Delaware. And I watched Archbishop Stepanak because they have Boogie Flan, who's like number 12 or some shit in 2024. Yep. And I was like, man, he's – Boogie Flan kind of stinks. And I'm like, he hasn't done shit this game. And I'm like, who is this guard? Mm -hmm. Who is he? And if you go back and like read the articles, I, ha I think I have one. I tagged him, and it's one of the articles I wrote about him. And I'm like, holy hell, like this kid is disgusting. He's a little small, but like <laughs> – It's disgusting. And all of a sudden, like he, now he's ranked like – what was it? Number 20 – they're 33. So I'm like, all right, well, maybe, maybe I know how to evaluate talent. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, he's only about like five eleven, but I, yeah, I found it. I wrote about him back in, uh, December. So mind you, I, I saw him before everyone else. <laughs> well, great scouting job there. And, uh, yeah. no doubt that, uh, Toot my own horn a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Getting ranked this highly is not going to guarantee Rutgers recruits a guy. They've shown that some of the guys they recruit are basically totally off the off the board. Some mm -hmm. of the guys are right near the top of the list, um, but it's got to make them do a double take <laughs> at the very least. Um, yeah, I can. And, and they like to go see guys too because they like to see how they you know how they play defense. Which in mm -hmm. highlights you typically don't see defensive highlights. You typically don't see how much kids give a shit, how much they're engaged on the bench, how much you know shit they give their coach when their coach takes them out of the game. Like that's stuff that's mm -hmm. really important to Pike and staff. So. Um, they don't really get caught up on, on highlights. They like to see kids in person and evaluate them that way. Yeah. Um, no, for sure. So we've kind of run through everything. We've gotten two pods in a row, two back to back days. Is there anything you want to touch on before we, we sign off here? I'd probably say just stay tuned. There's probably going to be a third one at this point, maybe not this weekend, but it's, it's kind of trending that way with Sage Claudius. Um, also, I said I said it last pod with Samari and Robinson committing. That means that uh, they are done done with linebackers. I'm told. So I have moved my future cast from really love to Rutgers to now unlikely. Don't know where he ends up currently. I'm keeping an eye on Maryland uh, basketball recruiting. Oh, that's what I had to say. Basketball recruiting. So I posted on the board yesterday, two days ago, three days ago, whatever it was. We were hearing that they were going to host a transfer prospect this weekend. Pike is actually going to push that back a week or two now, I'm told, as he's going to instead go on recruiting stuff this week, this weekend, uh, recruiting trips. I'm not sure where. I got to find out where again because I didn't write it down like an idiot. Um, uh, next weekend, next week is the Steve Pike will basketball camp from Monday to Friday. So they don't plan on anticipating hosting anyone next weekend. Um, we will be talking to Gavin Griffiths, Michael Davis, and Emmanuel Agbo. If he gets to campus in time, he's working some stuff out before he gets there, but he should be there shortly. Um, so we'll have them. We'll have interviews with those guys next week. I think we're talking to Pykele as well, and I'm sure he'll give us all the, the nitty gritty stuff of the off season of how everyone cheats and yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so maybe we're looking at like two weeks now for a transfer portal guy. So this is getting pushed back a little bit and. That kind of makes sense based on what we heard and the name we heard. So we'll kind of just uh, leave it at that for now. 
Yeah, no, it makes sense given the schedule. But I mean, these are also like people kind of ask us in both the comments and on the boards, like you guys said, this was happening. Now this is happening. I think what needs to be understood about recruiting is it is so fluid. You're dealing with kids between the ages of 15 and 23. And you're talking about transfers. Like not only do like they change their minds a lot, but also like things are constantly in flux with recruiting. There's nothing, there's never a static picture. There's never something that is like a definite in recruiting. So if things change, it's not necessarily because of bad information. Occasionally, like what happened this past week, like somebody, a source will misspeak and then have to clarify themselves. But most of the time, it's not bad information. It's not, you know, there's no, mis it's not a mistake. It's just that things have changed. And we, we like to get you guys information that's up to date, that's current, that's, that's meaningful. And sometimes that doesn't play out the same way. Like it just, things happen. So I yeah. just kind of want to put that caveat out there. Yeah, no, I appreciate that too. Because like this week, for example, we had a guy on Tuesday reach out to us and say, hey, there's a visitor on campus. Uh, and I was like, oh, like what kind of visitor? And they're like, we're here in transfer. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to post that. Posted it and it backfired because he comes back like a couple hours later. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. It was a, the kid was tall. I thought, or not tall. The kid was big. I thought he was a transfer. And I'm like, all right, well, thanks. Um, what was he? <laughs> so 2025 yeah. kid. I was like, that's, that's significantly different. That's a high school junior, like high yeah, school yeah. sophomore. That's yep. not a high, that's not a second year college player. So anyway, it happens. It is what it is. Uh, you can't get them all right. Um, so yeah, whatever. Darius Cup junior or not Darius. Jeez. Nigel James was on campus. So keep an eye on him too. Yep. Um, yep. lots of, lots of stuff going on for, late june and it doesn't sound like it's going to stop which i need i need a nap <laughs> <laughs> well i mean especially with uh how things have gone i don't think there's really any rest time anymore uh maybe maybe no. uh what, the week before training camp maybe yeah i get a week off. Be a good nice. time. Yeah. thanks i yeah. appreciate that uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's pretty much it it's uh it's just um non-stop now and even july like supposed to be a dead period but it's like mm -hmm. It's not really a dead period anymore. Kids are committing throughout all of July. I heard a kid yesterday say he's committing fourth of July, and I'm like, "You son of a bitch!" Like, <laughs> this is you supposed better to let be me know the, ahead of time. This is supposed to be the dead article. period. This is supposed to be mm -hmm. this. Um, we should have an update on Corey Duff soon too. He's supposed to go down to Miami today for a camp. Um, keep an eye on that. As if he looks looks good at the camp, Miami's going to host him on an official visit. If he doesn't. I like Rutgers' chances, but it's it's going to be very, very close between them and North Carolina. Miami hosts him on an official visit. I think – I hate to say it. I think that's it. I think he's a hurricane. Um, Josiah Brown canceled his Georgia visit, so now it's down to Rutgers and Penn State. Um, I like Penn State's chances there more than Rutgers, but we'll wait and see what happens. And, uh, yeah, but, I mean, end of the day, we we'll go back to Rutgers. This is a Rutgers podcast. The Elijah King get is huge. Fourth defensive line recruit. I just – everyone keeps saying, how many can it take? Take them all. Who's, who cares? Yep. You can always force kids out at the end of the day. Yep. Be a big-time college football program and kick the kid out that hasn't played in four years and say, sorry, not sorry. Yeah, no, that's the way things, unfortunately, are played. Things have gotten a little bit less uh, sentimental, a little more cutthroat with the advent that's, of Transfer Portal. I hate to keep extending this, but, like – my my big thing is is like when do you start using NIL to pay kids to leave? <laughs> oh hey, God. we're gonna give you a check. You could do like a a little like charity function over here, but like if we cut you this check, you're off scholarship. You gotta get out. You gotta go in a portal. Like here we out. Leave. It's, it's not a bad yeah. idea. Yeah, I don't I don't know how many people are gonna be psyched about that idea. Uh, That's like some coaches. You're a fourth yeah. year player in Alabama, and you, you don't have any uh, much playing time at all. Here's a check for your NIL deal. Um, thanks for doing that for us. Go uh go out there and go to a football camp with the youths, and then uh, you're gone. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll see. Uh, nothing would surprise me in college sports these days. Uh, yeah, it's insane. But, but that's all, all I got. right, guys. So, <laughs> thanks for listening once again. the The contest is still running. So, if you're listening to this, you could send uh, pounding nails into the comment section of the YouTube video that will enter you to the contest. You only get one entry. Like, so if you 
if you said pounding nails in a different video, you're, that's not going to give you an extra entry if you put it in this one as well. Yeah. But what will get you an extra entry is if you put your uh, pre rivals premium screen name in your comment, that'll get you two entries. We're going to do the drawing next week during a pod. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, and we'll, we'll reach out to you guys if, yeah. if you're the winners. So some of you smarties uh, have been using that that uh, 30 day free code and just signing up and then uh, entering your username I saw. That's interesting. Let's mm -hmm. see, let's see how, uh, I'm just saying, TKR30, if you want to go sign up real quick, uh, you're not going to regret it either. You're going to, once you're on the message board, you're stuck. You're like, you're done. That was yeah, not the right term. It's, <laughs> it's addicting. Uh, that's for sure. Um, but guys, thanks again for listening, guys and girls, because I know we have lady fans. Um, but, lady fans? Uh, yeah, apparently we do. Oh. I've, I've heard we do. People are saying that we do. People um, are saying this is the best looking podcast for Rutgers Athletics. And shout out to... That's, uh, I mean, that's just a fact. That's, I mean, yeah. You, you can't even debate that one. That's uh, <laughs> right up there in the Raptors. But anyway, guys, thanks for listening and girls. Uh, this has been another edition of the Night Report Podcast, signing off.